Good afternoon, everybody, and once again, welcome back to the video. My name is Samil. I'm going to be a host for this session. Here, I'm going to be teaching you a hands-on lab on how to implement incremental glue, glue crawling. So what do I mean by that? So let's say you have some files on the raw zone or silver or gold. You're using glue crawler to catalog the data, the metadata, right? So the problem here is if you are running the glue crawler on schedule, you might be crawling all the files again and again to identify if there's a new column added or there's a schema change, etc. But if you see as the file grows, your crawler is going to take more and more time, meaning it's going to consume more resources and your company is going to pay more money. So how do we optimize this, right? How do we only crawl the new files that have been added? Let me show you the solution uh, with a small demo in this video. So let's get started. So the first step in the project is you need an S3 bucket and I'm going to show you the entire setup, a hands-on lab, right? So uh, first what we need to do is I'm going to be using uh, this bucket, right? Again, if you have any bucket, you know, um, just use that. And again, this code will be given to you. All you got to do is set up your AWS access secret dev region and the bucket name. And what this code will do is basically it will publish some fake data into a folder called raw. As you can see, if I refresh, I have a raw zone and here you can see I have a customer uh, table and then I have some JSON files, right? Now, since we have this, now let me show you how to set up an S3 event, meaning anytime new files are added, we're going to push all these new files into an SQS and the glue crawler is going to basically get the data or get the files from the SQS and crawl only the new files. So let me show you that particular process. So first thing uh, is basically we need an SQS queue because as we uh, put files into these raw zone, we want to basically push them into a queue, right? So what we can do is basically we can basically come and search here for the uh, queue. Again, for the demo purposes, we're going to uh, click on create. We're going to make sure it's a standard queue. And here we're going to call customer new files. And then I'm going to click on create queue. Now, once the queue is created, you need to copy the ARN over here. So copy this ARN. Now in the notes, you will be given a policy. So all you got to do is basically come here and change your bucket name, whatever bucket you are using, your AWS account ID and your queue ARN will go here. Now, once that is done, copy this policy, uh, come to access policy, edit, scroll down, paste that one in, click on save. That's it. So the first step is we publish some fake data on S3. The second step is we, we create an SQS queue. And then um, basically we add that particular policy. So now we need to set up the S3 event. So let's take a look at that process. So back to my S3 bucket, if I go to the root directory and if I head over to properties and if I scroll down, uh, I, I, I would see a option over here called event notification. I'm going to click here. And let's name this as customer new files, whatever you want. And now we want to basically uh, listen inside a raw folder inside the folder customer. Again, you can give your prefix, right? So for now, I will, again, all of this material is given to you for your learning purposes. And the type of file that I want to be listening is JSON. I would be, uh, I would only want to have a new file. So I'm going to click on put. You can also select all objects events, but I'm, for now I'm going to select a put. Uh, scroll down and then select the destination as an SQSQ. And then here you can see your customer new files. I'm going to click. And here you can see now that uh, event has been configured. If I scroll down now, anytime if I put any new files on this particular bucket, um, automatically it will fire up an event and push those event into an SQS queue. Right now, if you see, uh, I do have one messages. So I'm just going to purge this quickly. All right. Now what we are going to do is we're going to just do a sample test over here. So if I go to this bucket, I'm going to run the script again. This will publish some fake data into the raw zone. And what I want to see is if uh, these events are coming into the queue. Okay. So now if I go back to the queue, here you can see one event over here. So which means the it is working the way we expected. So if I come here and click on send or receive message, poll for message. And here you can see, you can see that particular event. Hopefully made sense. Fantastic job, right? So you have an S3 bucket where the data is coming. You have an SQS queue. You set up an S3 event where you were able to push all the events into a queue. Now let's learn how to do the glue crawler part, right? So basically the next step 
heading back to the glue. So I'm gonna go to AWS glue and then I will click on crawler and then over here click on create crawler. I'm gonna name it as incremental, uh, you know, crawl customer files, click next. Now I'm gonna select the data source and the data source will be S3 and this will be listening inside the customer folder. So if I go back to the glue crawler, if I put in the path over here, right? And now over here, if you observe, there's a there's an option, right? Crawl based on event. So you might be doing crawl all subfolders, which is definitely not efficient. I would say uh, switch to an event-based crawling, right? So now here you can see we got to put the Q on. So I'm just going to copy this SQSQARN. You can configure dead letter queue, meaning if something failed, automatically those failed one will be going into dead letter. Later on, you can uh, re-archive back into uh, your uh, main queue for reprocessing. Again, keeping it simple, not complicated. Click on next, uh, select an IAM role. Next, target database, anything, doesn't matter. Click next and click on create crawl. Uh, so that is great. Now the only thing that I wanna make sure, so on the advanced setting, I'm gonna click on add new columns only. Okay, and click next and update. All right, so my crawler is now complete. If I refresh here, you can see it's my crawler, right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple of files over here. So I'm gonna run this Python file, which will be given to you in the exercise. So I'm gonna run this about three files. So roughly one or two customers will be added. Now, if I go to the queue, if I refresh here you can see I have some messages. Now when I run the glue crawler, the crawler will essentially get the, get the uh, files from the queue, right? It's gonna pull and then it's once the processing is complete, it's gonna remove those messages. So if I go back to my crawler and if I simply click on uh, come here and run crawler, this should take about 40 seconds roughly and I just wanna show you that quickly. So let me pause the video uh, and resume once the crawler is complete. My crawler is finally complete, took about 56 seconds. And at this point I can go to Athena and basically refresh here. I should be seeing that particular table. I can do a preview table. And as you can see, uh, I'm able to query my data. Now let's add a new column into the raw source and then again run the glue crawler and see if it's able to detect that new column and it's able to update the catalog, right? So what we're gonna do is in the same Python script, if you open that up, for the customers, as you can see, uncomment this line out. So we are adding a new column called test and I wanna see if this column uh, works, right? That's what we wanna see. So basically I'll do about five events roughly on a random fashion. Okay, so remember we have a new column, right? Called test right now. So now if I go back to my SQSQ, uh, which would be over here, as you can see four events are here. Now if I come here and run my crawler again, Oops, looks like it is now in the running state. Let me just make sure. Let me go back to crawler. Yeah, it is in the stopping state. So once it is stopped, I can rerun it again. So let me just refresh my uh, console or the UI. All right, so looks like it is stopped right now. Stopping, all right. So I think I just gotta be a little patient because it's not gonna allow me because it's still in the stopping state. So let's wait. But again, once this is uh, stopped completely, I'm gonna rerun the crawler. Now it would basically take those uh, new events or new files that came into S3, right? So I think it's complete now. Uh, now I can run it again. So run the crawler and as you can see, it's done. So my crawler will only pick up those new files from the queue. As you can see, four, four items in the queue. I'm gonna refresh again. Once the crawling is complete, I should see zero files over here. So let's wait for this to complete. Should take about 40 seconds. And then again, I'm gonna run my Athena ad hoc query. I should see a new column uh, and the value should be test. That's the um, goal over here, right? So again, let's wait. Should be done in a couple of seconds. Again, the steps are pretty simple. First, you need an S3 bucket. Second, you need an SQSQ. Then set up a policy on the SQSQ. Once you're done with the policy, then what you gotta do is basically uh, create a glue crawler. And then in the in the settings, make sure you select S3 events. Once that is done, uh, configure dead letter queue if needed as a best practices. And that's it, right? So I think it's complete. As you can see, it was much faster than before, right? 41 seconds. 
Uh, now, if I go back to my glue, if I, as you can see, that new column has now been added, right? So here you can see uh, the crawler is now crawling on incremental files. As you can see, test, 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 makes sense. So all the resources are in the GitHub section below where you can find the code which will generate some fake data on S3 bucket. So try these out. Then uh, the policy that you need to use is also on the GitHub section. Try editing stuff and try these labs out. Pause the video, uh, you know, try creating these resources. Uh, that's the best way you can learn. Thank you so very much for watching. If you have any more questions, let me know. Until then, keep smiling, keep programming, and I'm going to see you in the next video.